You're listening to the True Talk podcast, the place for real insights on real estate with real people. In today's episode, we're talking to Omar Cedillo of Guerra and Associates Realty. Omar, thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited to have you with us. Um, also Thank joining you. us today, I have Sebastian Mora, who's a loan officer here at True Loan Mortgage. You know, it's an interesting story how you two met. Why don't you tell us about that, Omar? <laughs> um, door knocking. Door knocking. Door knocking. <laughs> That's some old fashioned salesmanship right there. Yes, sir. I was out door knocking um, with a buddy of mine from the office and um, Sebastian didn't answer left the door hanger and got a call from him. You left the door hanger? Left the door hanger, yeah. <laughs> I remember Sebastian came in and yeah. said, this realtor left the door hanger, what do you think? I said, I think you call him. Yeah. That's, that's someone who's out looking for business and is a hustler, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, and I saw that and I, I really appreciated that because it's not that common anymore. So that's pretty much why I decided to call you because I was like, wow, this guy's really out here hustling and calling up and knocking on these doors, trying to That's find right. clients and whatnot, so yeah. So, so we know how you met, but why don't you take a step back and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Omar, right? I've been um, doing this for about a year and a half. A year and a half, so pretty new. Yeah. Still considered a rookie. Yes, yes. How's it going? Man, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's been a, a beautiful journey. It's taught me a lot about myself tested my character. Really? So it's been good because I've been able to look back in this past year and a half and been very proud of myself, mm -hmm. you know, for the resilience that I've had to be able to build something and doing what I always wanted to do. Well, expand <laughs> on that. What, what, when you say it's what you always wanted to do, what does that mean? You know, I think like, you know, like everybody else, everybody has this, this uh, you know, goal of having something of their own, you know, being their own mm -hmm. boss, mm -hmm. running a business. Right. And I just didn't know where to go, but I just knew that's what I wanted. What were you doing prior to this? I was doing sales. Sales. I was uh, doing sales. What? <laughs> TV and internet. TV and internet. <laughs> Well, a lot of people yeah, use TV and, and internet, internet, right? Yep. TV so, and internet. so what'd you learn in TV and internet that has helped you in real estate sales, and why'd you transition from one to the other? So the transition. I'll start with the transition. Okay. Um, but the transition was exactly that. One and a half something of my own, not knowing what route to take, but real estate was something that I was hearing a lot of. Especially mm -hmm. in a place like this, it's hard not to hear, hear about real estate, the way the city's growing. Um, so I said, you know what? I'm going to take this class. Man, I'm going to just go with it. Um, and I did just that. And have you sold a house yet? Yes. How many? <laughs> 17. 17. 17. That's, a good, that's a, quite an achievement. There are many agents that have been in the business for years and years that haven't sold 17 houses in that mm -hmm. period of time. So... Could I see it? Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, what's what's helped me back to your question? What what has helped me from my previous TV and internet to what has helped me now has been the fact that I've been I was on the phones. Mm -hmm. Right. I was working there for six years, so I was on the phones. It was inbound as opposed to this being outbound. Mm. Um, Meaning you were like in a call center. People were calling in to ask about the internet service that you then sold and we had to convert them so we were so selling this is TV very different because you're you don't sit at your desk and have people calling you hey can i buy a house right i mean you, <laughs> you got to find them right i mean that's how i ended up at sebastian's door, door right knocking. so if it was door knocking um what it's really helped has been the phones not having that fear of making the phone calls um and just hustling you know the sales I've t i learned so much at that job which was sales and um, I learned that having that experience of being on the phones which is a lot of struggle for people whenever they're starting reaching out for business making the phone calls mm -hmm. helped me you know because I had that experience and that's really how you know I've been able to do 
you know, okay for sure. my first year and but, a half. But but you touch on something that I think is important. People are afraid to pick up the phone and, and call. It's a, there's a fear of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. um, how did you overcome that? Like, what made you comfortable picking up the phone and knocking on doors? You know, I think it's uh, it's really what I have envisioned for for my goals long term. I need to get past it to get where I want to be, right? Mm. If I and that's what's really what what really allows me to take that step forward, put the fear aside, and just have the courage to make the phone calls because I have goals, right? You know that I want to accomplish. Um, I want to be able to succeed here, but it's not just about the sales. I have, I have a lot more goals. I've seen the impact, you know, that you can have in real estate, mm -hmm. and how good it can be for you if you're able to put your 100% into it. But the endless opportunities that real estate has, whether if it's you know helping somebody, if it's a family or somebody buy a home. You know, I, back at that job, I was, you know, helping also with like nonprofit work, right? So talking to kids and what really, and I, I'm, I say all of that to say that this pushes me, you know, to be able to be an example, you know, for those kids, to be able to be an example for, for anybody who, who, who was in that same situation that, that I, that I was, that I am in now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's 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 all it is. Just you know what it is, being scared to fail. Mm. You know, a lot of people are scared to make the phone calls. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to fail. <laughs> but you know, it's you interesting. Know? You talked about motivation a little bit, and you it's talked a lot about of motivation. You talked yeah. about endless po opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard you mention money a single time. No. Um, what's your why? What's your major it's motivation not. to do? whether it's real estate sales or this nonprofit work that you're doing, which I want to get into more in a little mm -hmm. while, what, what motivates you? Oh man. So the money, yeah, it ties in there, right? We all want to, want to succeed. We need the money to of live, course. but that's not what pushes me. You know, what I have in my vision, the goals that I have to accomplish the levels of success that I want to reach and it's to, build a team, right? In order for me to build a team, I need to be able to be successful in real estate. I want to be able to help other agents that mm -hmm. may need some kind of guidance. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're starting in this in this field, I want to be that person that can give somebody who's coming in some kind of guidance. My family, you know, if you know me, Sebastian knows. <laughs> Right, how big I am with my family. I have two kids, Tell you me know, and that. I want to make them proud. How old are your kids? They're eight and seven. Eight and seven, boy eight, and girl? A boy and a girl. And a girl. So that's it's great. like the best of both worlds. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Do you think having kids is another, like, driving factor that helps you stay motivated and move forward? Because I, I know I could call you up at literally four on the dot in the morning. Any day of the weekend, he will pick up. Like he's up with this four in the morning. Yeah, stuff. you're active at four, moving, and I mean, he does his prospect calls at seven. I mean, you're one of those guys that are like, you're on it. Mm -hmm. So what? Aside from your your you know your mission and everything, do you think you're having children gives you that extra push, especially being young? Yeah, a hundred percent. My 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 kids. Um, also, you know, I'm a big family man. So if if you hear me talking about my mom and my grandma all the time. I've heard so, you talk about your grandmother. I know. Mm -hmm. Besides the fact that she cooks good, but <laughs> she's a beautiful lady. But I want to make them proud. Right. You know, and I and and seeing and this is the things that keeps me going along the way. Um, when they see me posting these things on social media, and I get a message of like, wow, we're proud of you. That's great. It's like, how do you not keep going? You know, mm -hmm. and, 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 it, it, and it reminds me again, because throughout the process, you get lost in your why. Right. Right. My why is my family. I do want to make them proud. When I get those messages, when I get those phone calls, when I see them, it's like, OK, let's keep yeah, going. I've because done something. If I'm making you proud with this short period of time, you know, just imagine what I can do 
in this next year. You know, it, it's 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 beautiful. Speaking of making your family proud, let's let's take a step back and talk about you growing up because my understanding is you are 10 years the recipient of um, a DACA work permit. From DACA. And, um, and without DACA, your life may be very different. Tell us about that personal journey. Let's just go back to the beginning. So you want to go back to the DACA journey? You want to go back to when Where, I was born? Whatever you want to share. <laughs> well, you know, I was born in Mexico and um, my parents brought me here when I was one. Straight to Charlotte from Mexico? We lived in California for oh. a bit, for like a year or two. Right. I don't remember it. Sure. We lived in Texas. All right. We lived in South Carolina, and then we came here. So we did a lot of migrating from state to state to make sure that the family was together. And uh, since elementary school, I've been here in, in Charlotte. And DACA came about when I was 21. Mm -hmm. So when you I were one of the first recipients, that it sounds like. Yes. Wow. Game and how did that impact your life? Oh my God. It allowed me to work. <laughs> it allowed me to work. Um, you how know, if you, you when you got it? 21. I was just, 21. Just for those who maybe aren't as familiar with DACA, just give us a quick, what does that mean, DACA? So DACA gives you a work permit. So it gives you authorization to work here in the States. For anybody who was not born here mm -hmm. in the States, um, yet was raised here. Right. There's a few other things that, sure. that are tied into the qualifications, but you know, me being born in Mexico, being illegal here in the States, mm -hmm. but being raised here, for my first language is, 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 is English, even though I'm born mm. you know, in right. Mexico. Right. Even now with my kids. You never kids, do anything other. I speak to them in English, and, and my mom's always like, you gotta speak to them in Spanish. <laughs> you yeah. know? Are you so, speaking, but do they know Spanish? So they know Spanish okay, as good. well. You know, it's, it's getting there. Right. Um, but I wasn't fluent in Spanish up until like 17 years old. After high school, I had, yeah. you know, where I started working was just so why is that? Because your parents, obviously, that was their, their native language, right? Mm -hmm. So why do you think growing up, that you didn't know Spanish. Did they, was it, they wanted you to be inculcated into American culture? Like what, what's the backstory? So, so I guess I could say this, I did know Spanish, mm -hmm. but it's very similar to like what you see now in kids, right? Mm -hmm. Who are born here, mm -hmm. Spanish parents, but you get them to speak Spanish and, and you can hear that it's not fluent mm -hmm. because- Or the accent. Where we're, where we're going in school, we're going to school, we're learning English, or you know, or we're just here in, in the right. States, so it's in English. Um, the friends that we're hanging out with all speak English, mm. you know. So, my siblings were all speaking English to each other. So, at home, it was just my mom who I, who I had to speak Spanish to. <laughs> oh, interesting, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. So, I, I think that's where it comes from, but that. There's an evolution to that, right? Because my understanding is that you work with a real estate team. Yes. That is almost all Spanish speaking, multilingual. Bilingual. To, bilingual to help, um, to help Spanish speaking clients. Yes. Transact in Spanish when they want to, right? Yes. So, so it's- So learning Spanish at age 17 has paid off. <laughs> yes. Shout out to my job at that time, but yes. <laughs> what were you doing at that time from 18 to, to 21? I was working at a Spanish radio station, so. Nice. You know, everything that I was doing was in Spanish. Right. The music that I was hearing was in Spanish. Yeah, the yeah. people there only spoke Spanish. The commercials that we were working on were only in Spanish. Um, so it was all, all Spanish, all Spanish. It's interesting though, you said that you lived in California and then Texas and then South Carolina and then North Carolina is where you settled. Um, probably very fortunate that you didn't settle in South Carolina because you might not be doing what you're doing, right? <laughs> yes. Because absolutely. Uh, North Carolina, no problem getting a license, but South Carolina, it's a challenge with DACA recipients, right? Yes. So South Carolina, 
it's very tough. Well, you can't. I'm sorry. It's not tough. You just can't get your 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 real estate license. Mm. So everything that I practice is here in North Carolina. Yet I didn't know until you know you, you sign up with your team mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, you have to get your South Carolina license, and it's like perfect. Let's right. do it. And then and you discover then it's the okay. You can't do it. But that's also a great reason to be on the team, right? Because if you have a client that wants to buy in South Carolina, you have that opportunity to work with one of your colleagues on the team for South Carolina. Is that Absol right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a team of 10. Team know, of 10. Team of 10. Yeah. What, what's the breakdown of that? <laughs> what kind of support structure do you have and why do you like being on a team? And how did you meet them? How did you get involved with the, the Guerra team? So we had a mutual friend, Mike, who is the, the founder of the team. One of the guy, one of his, his friends is, is a friend of mine who used to work with me at my previous job. He said, there's this guy, he's starting out a team, you know, go check him out. He told me this vision that he had and I was sold. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you mentioned about the support, you've met the team. Or, you know, yes. Sebastian has met mm -hmm. the team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you know the team, you know that these guys have great energy. Yeah. You know, these guys. Definitely. These, these guys are the energy awesome. is there. That's what I was drawn to. Because sometimes, you know, we, we talk to all walks of life, clients, realtors, everybody. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing that I, I, I even told you when I called you initially. As soon as I called Omar, it was, hey, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? I was like, Oh, I like this guy already mm -hmm. because I have to sometimes tone it down too and try and stay professional because I'm usually high energy, like super motivated, ready. And that's why I think we click so well because, and then everybody on the Garrett team is like that. They're very high energy, ready to go. Like, yeah, let's tackle the day. So it's, it's really cool. You guys have an awesome thing going on. Yeah. It's a beautiful team. Um, they're very encouraging. You know, when you have a, a group of people who are, who are so, who are so genuine, Mm. you know and, and and root you on you know in this business a lot of people don't root you on right because mm. suppose it's like a lot of competition sure right and this culture is so nice because it, it's so encouraging so that's the support that that i receive from these guys is the <clears> encouragement <throat> they root me on <laughs> so it goes back to like what i said about um ab about my family when you see your own teammates mm -hmm. rooting you on about what you're doing, it's like, okay, let's go. Let me keep going. I got to do more. Right. You Have know? you had so a challenge that came up since you've been in real estate that you really think of, wow, I'm so happy I'm a part of this team because I was able to turn to someone to help me through that challenge. You, are you comfortable sharing that Absolutely. an example? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, when, when I started with the team and, and the firm that I'm on now, which was August of 2021, yeah, 2021, mm -hmm. you know, my first, when I did my first closing, my first closing was that I actually got paid, <laughs> you know, it was January. Right. <laughs> sure. And then that's where all the closings came from. Right. Right after that. Right. So you have August, September, October, November, December of not getting paid. What's, what, what is that, that concern that enters everybody's mind, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in this business? How am I going to do this? Right. Have I made the wrong choice? You know, oh, is any of this going to work? You know, everything, all these seeds that you're planting, all these doors that, that, that you're right. trying to knock down mm -hmm. and I have Mike, right? Who, who, who's our team leader. Our team was not 10 people at that time. Right. Right. It's, it's been growing, um, as the time has come so by. So you went to Mike? So I went to Mike and, or Mike came to me. He just saw me that I was just down, about to tap out. <laughs> <laughs> and he always tells me now, he's like, I told you it was going to pay off. <laughs> You what know, do you think he saw in you that made him think that? Oh, my God. He always tells us that, you know, when he pitched us the idea of what he was wanting to do, of build this team, 
you know, even, even up to like last week, um, he tells us that he's always so grateful that we just believed in him. You know, and, and I think that at that time when he was, you know, looking to build this team, he was looking for, for like these young professionals, you know, to, 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 build, to build a team with. And um, I'm hoping he saw somebody that he could, you know, just count on to help him with that, with that journey that we're in now together. You know, that's that's what I'm hoping that that he probably saw. <laughs> that's what it sounds like there was a little bit of believing that the other would support the, one another, right? You believed that he would support you. Absolute. That's what it is. And he believed 100%. you were there to support him. A hundred percent. It was it was 100%. believing in people. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you think that's still true today? Absolutely. Yes. You know, Mike's like, oh my God, man, this. He's like a brother of mine, you That's know, um, that a brother that, that, that created a really good, you know, relationship with throughout this time. We recently had a, um, I think you were at this event, we had a um, real estate mastermind and several of the agents left that and said, this was great being able to talk with other agents mm -hmm. and discuss their successes, their challenges and ideas. Because what they said is, I never talk with many agents other than when I'm negotiating on the opposite end of a deal. Mm -hmm. Because they're not on teams. And so this is interesting. They don't have that experience. So you're saying really having that team has been that encouragement and has guided you through the startup to get you to this point where you're just so enthusiastic about moving forward. Absolutely. And, and, and it's not just you know the the team itself because even if you're not on my team well and, and if you know me you know i'm a pretty yeah. friendly person right so <laughs> i'll start a conversation up with you and you know at the firm that we're in there's a lot of agents in there and, and just today you know i was talking to a guy he got in there by 7 30 so we're both there so you're curious about what you're doing there mm -hmm. at that time right and i'm always asking always asking it whether you're on my team or not and, and this is what's really helped me a lot it, it, it really has because i'm always learning always learning and i'm learning by my, with my own peers you know i'm, I'm never if i see that you're winning i want to know how you're winning right you know i, I, I want to know if you can help me right you know also with what you're doing or just share your ideas they may not be for me Sure. Right, but maybe I can put them into what I'm but doing. I, I see you guys, the two of you, doing that a lot. Sebastian mm -hmm. is meeting with you and going over ideas. I mean, what, I see you guys huddled up in that office a lot. Yeah. Coming up with ideas. What, what's that process like for you guys collaborating as a mortgage professional, real estate professional? What, what's the goal in there? And what do you, well, what's, I think, what does I that think, look like? Yeah, well, absolutely. I think part of it is that we have very similar similar goals and philosophies um we mentioned earlier omar you've never you didn't even talk about the money and it's very we see that like you're one of those agents that is or just not agents just people that is, are so genuine and and driven on like a bigger mission than just a paycheck so whenever i meet people like that it's like those are the people i want to work with and aside from real estate aside from this we have so many big projects that we're looking forward to do and basically everything that we've brainstormed off of each other it's like we just develop it in such little time like sure like all these you know events that we have planned out you know we really want to reach into the um latino community and kind of tap into that nonprofit stuff too and and just be everywhere be everywhere and and help out not just get people families and and individuals and homes but just be out there in the community, be a, you know, be one of those um, persons that, you know, yeah. can reach out to for anything, really. A hundred percent. And, and I've always been a team player, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've always been a team. I played sports. I played soccer a lot, you know, growing up. Um, so I've always been a team player and I've realized not just throughout, you know, my, my, my journey in real estate, but just in general that, there's a lot of things, you know, that you may lack as a person, but that doesn't mean that your partner 
you know, can't fill in what you're lacking. And that's why I'm a big believer in team player and, and being a, a team player and working in a team because you can get a lot more done, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's been very <clears throat> big for me. And while I'm always looking to partner, you know, not partner, brainstorm with Sebastian, with my teammates, with other agents, always looking to be a team player. It's the best thing you could do. What's the day in the life of Omar? <laughs> Walk us oh, that's the that's easy because I'm very your, I'm very scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it. That's easy because I follow a schedule. Um, so today is my schedule. You know, I can I can tell you my schedule, but I'm up at three thirty. Three thirty. Yeah. So I'm up I, at. I don't go to bed till three thirty sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm up at three thirty, and I'm getting to the gym at four fifteen. Okay. And then you know by the time I get home, I get ready. I have my breakfast. I'm in the office at seven. And um, from seven until. 11, 12, um, I'm, I'm prospecting, All right? I'm, look, I'm looking for business, making phone calls to who? To everybody. Um, if it's for sell by owners. Maybe you find everyone's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like the people that I call. <laughs> how'd you get Where, my number? How'd you get yeah. my number? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, what's, like the a part like, what, what's the audience you're, you're contacting is what I'm asking. So for sale by owners are on Zillow. Okay, all right, Makes right. Sense. So mm-hmm. it, it's it's easy so to find. Calling for sale by owners, looking for listings, mm-hmm. potential listings. Absolutely. Makes sense. All right. What and else? then you have um, something that I just recently started doing. You know, looking into new things to to, mm-hmm. to do, which is now, and and a lot of the the stuff that I've done has came from from connections that I built through for sale by owners, but now expired listings, right? Okay. So expired listings, you can find those the same way that I have them, like on a dialer, mm-hmm. right? Or you can just look for look for them on the MLS expired listings. Um, but I have a dialer also where I'm circle prospecting, looking for long term business, and then of course how how I met Sebastian. Um, you know, I, I, I would be going out there, going to the doors, knocking on doors as well. So that's what my prospecting looks like, you know, for my first half of the day. Um, afterwards, I'll go into appointments, whether if it's showings or consults, any mm-hmm. kind of appointment that I may have. Podcast. Podcast, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, podcast. And, um, and that typically just ends up to where if I do have appointments, then that kind of takes up the rest of my day. Sure. If not, then I'm coming back and working on my business. Do you have a, a certain number of contacts you're trying to make a day or a week or a month? Like what, what's the, do you have a quantitative goal? Yeah, so I do want to make at least 100 contacts a week. Okay. 100 contacts a week. It's 20 days. Um, mm-hmm. Whether if it's, however it is, mm-hmm. you know, through people that I meet, on social media, I do make sure that I'm only consider I'm only counting people that that are new, you know, not just the same person that I spoke to last week, but a hundred mm-hmm. new people a week. Oh, so it's a hundred new contacts. Mm-hmm. A hundred new contacts a week. Now, does a voicemail count, or do you have to have a live conversation? So for me, it's mm-hmm. a, a conversation. So you're looking to have twenty actual conversations. Yes. How long does an average conversation last? It depends, you know, because if, if I'm doing, we could say maybe around, if, if I'm circle prospect and they're typically around, I don't know, like three minutes. Okay. So it, you quick know, conversation. Yeah. So what's it the can goal? Be quick. What's the goal after that? So you're having a, a first conversation with somebody, it's a for sale by owner or a um, expired listing, whatever it may be. What's the goal of that conversation? What are you trying to accomplish in those three minutes? So I'm wanting initially to get an appointment. Okay. That's that's initially what I'm wanting. Why to would they give you an appointment? What's that's a good fix? question. <laughs> what, what value are you bringing them that, that would make an appointment with you? That's a good question. You know, I mean, now that I'm able to 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 show what I've done, mm-hmm. you know, I I do bring value in regards of the work that I've done. So whether it's what I've done for other clients, mm-hmm. testimonials for them as well. Um, building that rapport with them on the phone call, 
I mm. think helps me get the door get, get myself into the door as well. Um, so given that kind of, I guess you could say like giving them my resume, right. Well, will, well, will help out a lot. If I were to sit down mm-hmm. and interview five of your past clients, yeah. What would you, what do you think they would say about you? What would be the number one theme that they would say about you? So I'll, I'll tie it back to the report, right? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tie it back to the report. I can definitely say that, and it's something that Sebastian just said, that they knew that I was genuine. You know, they knew that I was a genuine person, which means that they knew that they had somebody that they could trust. And I think that's one of the most important things that needs to be established when a client is going to work with an agent or when you're just going to work with anybody in life. And that trust throughout the process just got even more higher and more higher. And they knew that the goal that they had Mm -hmm. was my goal. Right. Whatever it was, my so goal was to make their goals. very supportive. Your goal is to support theirs. I was yeah. in their best interest at all times. And I know, I know for sure because now they became friend of mine. Have, have, you had a, have you had a situation where you had a client that wanted to do something you felt like was not in their best interest and you had to have <laughs> that difficult, heart to heart conversation with them? Yes, absolutely. You want to tell us about it? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot, there's a, there, there, there's a lot of scenarios that have happened. You know, when, when the market previously, it was, it was crazy, right? So what were we having to do? Um, if it was putting homes on the contract without any kind of inspections, mm-hmm. right? Which is a big, it's a big risk. So you would advise the client, you know, that's not in your best interest? I don't want to say do it right right but it was things that had to be done but some houses were a little bit more uh, on the end of where they needed more work than others you know in in some situations that Mm -hmm. that that i was working with and they would still take that that leap of faith (laughs) you know to to do it and it it all worked out um that's good because it could have gone good. the other way. Absolutely. What but you, you had think, to advise them otherwise. Absolutely. What do you think is the biggest challenge right now, like in the current market, especially in Charlotte? What do you think is like your biggest obstacle that you're encountering with new clients that are calling you and say, hey, I want to buy? Or is it the right time to buy? Like, what is your cha- what's your, what's the newest challenge and the most common one that you're seeing? So, giving them edu- educating. Mm-hmm. Right, because what's the norm that we're hearing right now from people? Everything that they're hearing on the news, all the negativity. It, it's right? not a good time to buy, right? The interest rate, the is, prices is it of a good homes. Time to buy? So the same way that I answer to everybody, right? It, if it makes sense for you, then absolutely, because it may be a good time for you to buy, but maybe not for Sebastian. But you know, current clients that I have now and just a recent conversation, you know, that I had with somebody, I had somebody just get back on the market from taking a three week break. Sure. Wanting the same house, oh, it wasn't yeah. there. So why did they come back <laughs> in the market? They regret what they did. Yeah. What they did or what they didn't do? What they didn't do. Ah, what they didn't do. The so regrets of inaction. Mm-hmm. So now they're wanting the same style, same, same deal. Right. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, what I always tell people now, let me just show you if it's a buyer's market now and it, it makes sense for you, why is it not a good time to buy? Yeah, it's just very tough. You, you got to know what somebody's going through. You got to know what their goal is as well to be able to give that right advice and guidance. Before we wrap up, though, I want to ask you, you mentioned you got to know where people are going and what their goals are. And um, you mentioned earlier that you do some volunteer work. I understand you go back to your old middle school and you're working with kids there. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so this was something that was happening before where um, you know we would go out and do pretty much, I was volunteering at an after school program. Mm-hmm. And the after school program was at my old middle school. <laughs> That's great. Right, so it was beautiful to see, to be able to come back, and, and we were teaching life lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, 
something that a lot of people may not shine light on, right? But, but it's very important to the youth. We were doing life lessons. We were helping with academics. And then we were doing coaching for soccer. That's great. So, that's great. yeah, that's, 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 really nice. that's, that's what we were doing. So I think uh, we're, we're going to be able to have folks meet both of you together. You mm -hmm. said earlier that you are working on having some events this year. Mm -hmm. There's going to be focused on mainly first-time home buyers, right? Yeah. And um, so we'll be posting those different events on our, our social media and inviting folks to it. Where can folks find you if they want to contact you? So social media is my first and last name, which is Omar Cedillo. And then and we'll put it here at the bottom. Of the yeah, screen. absolutely. And then um, Instagram is Omar Estates. And um, yeah, that's where all my social media is. All right. Thank you so much, Omar. It's been thank you. such a delight to thanks, have you. Thanks, Omar. Thanks today. for coming. Thank you. All right. Thanks.